With his collection of 70,000 pencils, Iowa man hopes to break the world record. Colfax resident Aaron Bartholomew wants to set a world record. He has more than 70,000 wooden pencils for advertising. Every type of pencil you might imagine is available at Bartholomew, even those you would not have known were possible. However, he values his antique, historic pencils from his hometown the most. I love seeing local businesses, you know, for so many of these places, these pencils are the only place where there is any record of that business still. And I think it's just a neat way to preserve the history, Bartholomew said. His collection was put to the test for the world record this past weekend. About 24,000 pencils now hold the biggest collection record according to Guinness World Records. Bartholomew hired two counters from the American Pencil Collectors Society to count every single pencil on Saturday and Sunday. The Colfax Historical Society hosted the event. Bartholomew declared the occasion a success and said he could confidently say he exceeded the 70,000 participant threshold. Bartholomew is still awaiting word on whether Guinness has accepted the count. According to him, it will take around 12 weeks to examine and react to his proposal. California's aggressive sea otter was caught on camera stealing surfboards. A sea otter is the unexpected perpetrator of a string of surfboard thefts along a section of Californian coastline. The otter has gotten onto surfboards in at least four different instances, nipping and scratching them. In some instances, the mammal's aggressive behavior forced surfers to put down their boards and swim to shore. Signs announcing the presence of a aggressive sea otter in this area have been placed along the Santa Cruz shoreline by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Enter the water at your own risk, the sign reads. Photographer Mark Woodward, also known as Native Santa Cruz on Twitter and Instagram, has been posting pictures and videos of sea otters grabbing boards and riding them. This may seem cute and funny, but it's getting to be dangerous, he wrote on Instagram. I'm afraid that the sea otter, which was born in captivity and released when it was old enough, will have to be captured and live at a rescue sanctuary. The 841 otter was born five years ago to an otter that was also well known for approaching kayakers. However, because 841 was raised in captivity, it is unlikely that it mimicked its mother's actions. According to the Fish and Wildlife Service, experts don't have a clear reason for the behavior, although the otter may be experiencing hormone surges or being fed by people. To catch the otter and find it a new home, wildlife officials are collaborating with Monterey Bay Aquarium sea otter specialists. The third highest prize in history for the Powerball game exceeds $900 million. The anticipated $900 million jackpot for the U.S. Powerball is the third highest in the lottery's 30-year history. The enormous sum was increased from $875 million because no ticket had the winning combination in the draw on Saturday night. There hasn't been a winner of the Powerball jackpot in 37 straight games since it was last won on April 19 for a top reward of over $253 million. Since Powerball was introduced in the U.S. in 1992, Monday's award is the third highest jackpot. A staggering $2.04 billion Powerball jackpot was won in November of last year surpassing the previous record of $1.6 billion set in 2016. The chances of the game, which are 1 in 292.2 million, 
are created to provide large jackpots that entice more participants from 45 U.S. states as well as Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. While there was no jackpot winner on Saturday, Powerball said that three tickets, two in Texas and one in Colorado, matched all five white balls and are eligible to win $1 million prizes. The prize pool for Monday's drawing is either $900 million paid out in annual installments or a one-time lump sum payment of $465.1 million before taxes. The cash lump amount is chosen by almost all winners. North Carolina teenager WHO tried a popular travel hack is banned by American Airlines. American Airlines has now grounded a North Carolina student who recently tried to employ a well-known money-saving trick while flying with them. The 17-year-old's father, Hunter Parsons, said last week that his son was stopped and interrogated at a Florida airport for the travel policy violation known as skip lagging, also called hidden city ticketing or point beyond ticketing, which is against the rules of most significant airlines. According to Parsons, his kid never did anything wrong but had his ticket invalidated and was expelled from AWE for three years. Even worse, he never received a boarding card. The adolescent, who was traveling from Gainesville, Florida, to New York City, had a ticket, but Parsons claims that a gate attendant prevented him from boarding because he had a North Carolina driver's license and the trip had a stopover in Charlotte, North Carolina. The senior Parsons told WJZY that an American Airlines gate agent believed the youngster was skip lagging or planning to go to the connecting city instead of the location shown on his boarding pass to cut costs. To bring his kid to Charlotte, according to Parsons, the family had to purchase a $400 direct trip in addition to the $150 cost of the canceled ticket. The teenager, according to him, didn't know he was doing anything wrong. He was left to fend for himself 500 miles from home, Parsons told the outlet of his son. He never violated any policy or broke any contract. He simply went to a counter to get his boarding pass. The family has utilized Skip Lagged, a website that explicitly offers hidden city ticketing journeys, for at least five to eight years according to Parsons, who verified his kid was skip-lagging. He did admit, though, that if his son had succeeded, it would have been the first instance in which a family member had missed the last leg of a trip. American Airlines refused to comment on the case when contacted and instead pointed to its standards, which state that the company forbids purchasing a ticket without intending to fly all flights to gain lower fares. Our records indicate the customer was questioned only at the ticket counter about their travel while attempting to check in for their flight, a spokesperson for AWE said in a statement. A member of our customer relations team has been in touch with them to address their concerns. According to the IRS, a new paperless processing strategy will speed up refunds. The Internal Revenue Service wants to eliminate paper. Beginning with the 2019 tax season, taxpayers can submit correspondence and non-tax paperwork online, according to proposals revealed on Wednesday by the Federal Tax Collecting Agency. And as part of a paperless drive, to file all returns online by the 2025 filing season, which the government claims would increase efficiency, accuracy, and the speed at which Americans get their tax refunds. Currently, taxpayers can electronically file their yearly 1040 tax forms, but almost all other interactions with the IRS must be done by normal mail.
According to the IRS, its new paperless program would reduce the quantity of paper used annually by up to 200 million pieces, cut processing times in half, and shorten the time it takes to get refunds by several weeks. According to the organization, the changes will eliminate the requirement for more than 94% of taxpayers to send the IRS any mail at all. Taxpayers will have the opportunity to send all communications, including answers to notifications, online beginning with the 2024 filing season. Additionally, 20 new tax forms will be made accessible for e-filing in a mobile-friendly format. Another 150 of the most used, non-tax forms will be accessible in digital versions by the 2025 filing season, and the IRS will be able to electronically process all paper filed returns. According to the IRS, digitizing its estimated 1 billion historical records will also help it save around $40 million a year on storage expenses. The agency anticipates that its digitization strategy will assist it in pursuing tax fraudsters. The Inflation Reduction Act provided the IRS with $80 billion, which it used to modernize its operations through the Paperless Project. As citizens escaped crime Indiana 2020, Oregon County lost $1 billion, homelessness, it's like Portland died. Residents leaving the state due to rising crime, homelessness, and safety concerns are said to have cost Multnomah County, where Portland, Oregon, is situated, more than $1 billion in revenue between 2020 and 2021. In the first year of the pandemic in 2020, 14,257 tax filers and their dependents departed Multnomah County, taking a record $1 billion in income with them according to data analyzed by Oregon Live. Higher incomes were more inclined to quit, according to the research, because they could complete their work remotely when the coronavirus was shut down. Additionally, the average salary of those departing was 14% greater than it was for those leaving the previous year. Portland has grown for 15 years running up to the year 2020. The 2020 migration happened at the same time as violence in Portland started to rise, and in 2021 and 2022, the city set new records for homicides. Additionally, Portland's homelessness epidemic has continued to get out of hand, and some local business owners have raised the alarm about the problem and the violence that goes along with it. The office of Mayor Ted Wheeler revealed a 50% rise in homelessness between 2019 and 2022. Portland lost 8,308 residents between July 2021 and July 2022, suggesting that the pandemic-related exodus of residents has persisted. According to census statistics, Portland lost the sixth most inhabitants nationwide during the previous 12 months. It's like Portland died longtime Portland resident Larry May told in May. Raw beef sold at Aldi may contain plastic, according to a public health advisory. The Food Safety and Inspection Service FSIS, of the U.S. Department of Agriculture USDA, has warned about raw beef that may include plastic and is sold at Aldi shops. The FSIS warned that the raw beef could include foreign objects, exceptionally soft, transparent plastic, in the health notice. FSIS stated that the notice was sent to ensure that the public was aware of the possibly contaminated food and advised them not to consume it, even though a recall was never made because the product is no longer sold at Aldi shops. On July 25, 2023, the beef in issue was put up in 1.5-pound plastic trays marked USDA Choice Black Angus Beef from Aldi, Beef for Carne Picada. The items, use by or freeze by, date is August 22, 2023, the Julian date is 206, 
and the timestamp ranges from 8.43 to 9.23. On the reverse label of the package is the establishment number EST, 85M. The meat was sold in a few Aldi supermarket shops across the United States, according to FSIS. The problem was detected after the institution informed FSIS that a retailer had complained about finding soft, transparent plastic in the goods. However, if someone is worried about getting hurt or becoming ill, they should contact their healthcare practitioner, according to the FSIS, which stated that there have been no documented instances of illness or injury related to eating the beef. Although the product is not officially on the market, the FSIS is worried that people may have bought the meat and frozen it for future use. FSIS advised customers not to ingest the meat and to either dispose of it or return the packed beef to the retailer where it was purchased. Crisis in Kensington. It's chemical warfare on the streets, former user says. One recovering heroin addict and former inhabitant of the city of brotherly love says the worst is yet to come. A trank pandemic is already wreaking havoc on a neighborhood in the city of brotherly love, leaving users with horrifying flesh scars or murdering them altogether. It's the worst thing I've ever seen, said Frank Rodriguez, who has become a local activist since getting clean. This is literally chemical warfare. Drug addicts who are hooked to xylazine, an animal tranquilizer that has invaded the country's illicit drug supply, have made Philadelphia's Kensington area their hangout. According to the Philadelphia Department of Health, more than 90% of drug samples tested in Philadelphia in 2021 included the substance also known as Trank or the zombie drug. It looks like a zombie movie, Rodriguez, a former drug dealer himself, said. You see the people falling apart, limbs falling off. In Kensington, it's common to witness drug users using needles to inject themselves or passing out on the ground with fleas covering their flesh-eating wounds. A couple of inebriated users staggered onto the busy road wearing only their underwear, and automobiles almost ran them over. The Drug Enforcement Administration DIA, warns that Trank can result in painful wounds that occasionally need amputation. Additionally, the medication renders users comatose for protracted durations, making them vulnerable to rape or theft. Indeed, it is even fatal. Maggie, a 30-year-old heroin addict, has been residing on the streets of Kensington for four years. She once took medication without understanding it included xylazine and blacked out, waking up without shoes. It's horrible out here, Maggie said. When it was regular heroin, it was nothing like that. It's worse. You see people around here, and they don't know what they're doing. Because of the xylazine, she said. I've lost a lot of good friends. People are just dying all around. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Less than 3% of fatal overdoses in 20 states and Washington, D.C. in January 2019 were fentanyl combined with xylazine. That increased to nearly 10% by June 2022. The DIA also issued a warning in March of this year on the hazardous mixture's potentially fatal effects as well as its expanding availability across the country. Xylazine was discovered by the FDA in 48 states, 23% of fentanyl powder, and 7% of fentanyl tablets. Xylazine is making the deadliest drug threat our country has ever faced, fentanyl, even deadlier, DIA Administrator Ann Milgram said. On his way to recovery, Rodriguez left Kensington, 
but he returns there almost weekly to give desperate drug addicts food, water, clothes, and haircuts. The drug addict in recovery also attempts to inspire other drug users to quit using drugs as he did. Rodriguez claimed that despite his efforts, the area worsened over time as more harmful drugs found their way into the drug trade. Authorities reveal issue from home at center of deadly Pennsylvania explosion. According to the Allegheny County Fire Marshal's office, the house where the explosion that killed five people and severely damaged several other buildings over the weekend took place had hot water tank issues. Officials issued a statement Monday night advising the public to avoid the plum outside of the Pittsburgh region while they investigated the source of the devastation on Saturday morning. The fire marshal's office can confirm that it is aware that the homeowners at 141 Rustic Ridge Drive were having hot water tank issues. The tank was located in the basement of the home, the fire marshal's office said. Officials will now investigate that information along with any and all other possibilities during their processes that may explain what occurred, it added. Heather Orovitz, 51, the town's director of community development, and Michael Thomas, the borough manager, 57, were both killed in the explosion, according to Plum Mayor Harry Schlegel. Along with three other residents in the area, 38-year-old Casey Klontz, 12-year-old Keegan Klontz, and 55-year-old Kevin Sabunia. Paul Orovitz, the spouse of Orovitz, has significant burns covering the majority of his body and was hospitalized Tuesday, according to Schlegel. Two other victims of the explosion were hospitalized, treated, and then released. A total of three structures were destroyed and at least a dozen more damaged in some way, the Allegheny County government wrote on its Facebook page. According to the government, County 911 received numerous calls from the Rustic Ridge Drive and Brookside Drive area in Plum Borough at approximately 10.22 a.m. reporting a house explosion, several houses on fire and damaged, and reports that people may have been in the impacted homes. First responders from the police and fire department arrived on scene and reported that there were people trapped under debris and that it appeared as if one house had exploded, and two others were engulfed in fire, it added. A few homes away resident Rafal Kolenkovsky told the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette that the explosion rocked him and his wife to the ground and smashed the windows in his home. It's just tragic, I mean, it looks like a war zone. It looks like a bomb hit our neighborhood, and it's just unfortunate," Kolenkovsky said. I was just with some of the neighbors yesterday, and now this happens. Virus quickly spreads across Florida counties, health officials say. As the number of dengue virus infections increased this month, Florida health authorities issued a mosquito-borne sickness notice for Broward County. Miami-Dade County now includes Broward County, which includes Fort Lauderdale, as the disease spreads throughout the region. In its report on the arbovirus surveillance covering the period from July 30 to August 5, the Florida Department of Health noted two instances of locally acquired dengue in Broward County. This year, the Sunshine State has had 10 locally acquired dengue cases, most of which have been in Miami-Dade County. Most of the 10 were made public in July. 10 cases have been serotyped by PCR. In 2022, there were two locally acquired dengue cases, the department in Broward County said.
This year, Florida residents had a history of travel to a region where dengue is endemic and the two weeks before commencement accounted for roughly 200 cases. Ten of those instances were documented among non-Florida residents, and one of those cases matched the requirements for severe dengue, according to the agency. Dengue is often absent in Florida and is transmitted through the bite of an infected mosquito. Infected tourists, however, can transmit the virus to Florida mosquitoes. People having a history of dengue infection, expectant mothers, young children, the elderly, and those with comorbid conditions are at higher risk of contracting the disease. Notably, people without any of these risk factors can also get severe diseases. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 225 dengue cases have been documented in states throughout the United States this year. In 2010, dengue fever became a condition that required nationwide notification. Ridiculous, wanted Georgian guy detained after applying for job at Arkansas Police Department. According to Arkansas Police, a guy who applied to become a police officer had arrest warrants out for him in Georgia. Justin C. Carter, 24, applied for the police officer position online while he was hiding in South Carolina, according to a news statement from the Monticello Police Department. The 24-year-old wanted man reportedly traveled to Arkansas to confirm the information on the physical fitness exam. Officers said that once he arrived, they noticed discrepancies in his physical appearance from his background check. Carter's genuine name and a federal arrest warrant from Georgia were discovered after investigators looked into his past in more detail. The next day, Carter tested his physical fitness with the police at the track at Monticello High School. Carter was permitted to take the fitness test by the authorities, who then arrested him once he finished. He was sought for, according to the police, in Georgia for violating his probation. He is awaiting transit back to Georgia after being arrested. Heat will impact central U.S. as thunderstorms forecast across country. The middle U.S. is now experiencing excessive temperatures that had previously only affected the northwest and south, making for a sweltering weekend for the majority of the nation. For the Great Lakes, East Coast, Gulf Coast, Florida, and the southwest on Thursday, sporadic thunderstorms are predicted. Tropical Storm Hillary, which is currently churning in the Pacific, is predicted to build quickly off the coast of Mexico. On Sunday and Monday, Hillary is expected to make landfall in Southern California, bringing with it exceptionally heavy rain, powerful gusts, and maybe several tornadoes as the system advances onshore. For some of the arid regions where flash floods and mudslides are probable, this will be a very major thing. Five deaths from flesh-eating bacteria have been reported by Florida officials in Tampa Bay since January. According to Florida officials, five people have been proven deceased in the Tampa Bay region as a result of a flesh-eating bacteria that is known to lurk near beaches. According to Florida Health, the Vibrio vulnificus bacterium's natural habitat is in warm, brackish seawater because it requires salt to live. The bacteria typically grow more quickly in warmer months. Despite the rarity of infections, health experts advise against swimming if you have any open wounds, cuts, or scratches. There were been five documented cases of fatal bacterial infections this year, with two deaths occurring in Hillsborough County and one each in Pasco, Polk, and Sarasota counties. 
Since January, there have been 26 cases of Vibrio vulnificus infections in Florida, according to authorities. There were a total of 74 cases and 17 fatalities in 2022. That year's figures were unusually high because Hurricane Ian released sewage into the ocean, which raised the number of germs. The necrotizing fasciitis, a serious illness in which the tissue surrounding an open incision dies, is caused by certain Vibrio vulnificus infections, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC. More than one kind of bacterium can cause necrotizing fasciitis. Skin infections brought on by Vibrio vulnificus can result in ulceration and skin disintegration. Infections caused by Vibrio vulnificus can affect anybody, but those with compromised immune systems may experience more severe symptoms. The bacterium can enter the circulation and result in a severe sickness that is potentially fatal and has symptoms including fever, chills, low blood pressure, and blistering skin sores. It has the potential to result in serious sickness or death. According to the CDC, one in five victims passes away within a day or two after becoming ill sometimes. People who consume raw or undercooked oysters and shellfish run the risk of contracting the illness Vibrio vulnificus. People who have symptoms should seek medical assistance right once even though it cannot be passed from person to person. Last week, the New York State Health Department released guidance for residents to identify Vibrio vulnificus infections after the bacterium claimed the lives of one New York resident and two Connecticut residents over the summer. Governor Kathy Hochul referred to the flesh-eating bacteria as extraordinarily dangerous and advised her residents to take preventative measures. Angry Street. Lewis residents sound off against homeless encampment in front of their homes. According to a media report, two homeless persons who have been camped out on a sidewalk in a St. Louis neighborhood for years have angered locals. I think they need somewhere permanent to live out the rest of their lives that's comfortable for them and comfortable for everyone else around them, told St. Louis resident Steve McClanahan. I just think there's got to be a better place for them to be. City officials claim that a man and woman who have been living in a makeshift shelter made of blankets and shopping carts in South St. Louis for at least 10 years are known locally as sidewalk squatters. From what I've understood, they've been traveling a two-block radius for at least 15 years, McClanahan told the outlet. The couple do not speak English, and the woman is disabled. Neighbors said they sympathize with the pair but object to the filthy surroundings of the temporary tent, including rat problems and stink. You can't have people come over to visit you, during, the holidays or anything else," McClanahan said. Another St. Louis resident told the outlet, Yeah, I feel sorry for them, but they've been there for years, and nobody's done anything about it. The city has already made unsuccessful attempts to evict the couple from their home on the sidewalk. The couple receives visits from the St. Louis Department of Human Services almost every week, and they are now hoping that an immigrant assistance agency may be able to assist them with their language problem. I hate to see people live like that. There's got to be some type of solution, told Lucille Bardo, who owns a store across the street from the couple's tent home, adding she's lost customers over the couple's makeshift home.
A man was detained after attempting to flee from Florida to London on a makeshift hamster wheel. A Florida guy who attempted to use a handmade hamster wheel to run across the Atlantic Ocean to London has been detained. Reza Bellucci, 44-year-old, was discovered by the U.S. Coast Guard, USCG, on August 26 off the coast of Georgia. He reportedly claimed he wanted to continue to the UK. By court records, the USCG determined that the homemade watercraft was manifestly unsafe and was only kept afloat by buoys and wiring. He set off on his journey just days before Hurricane Franklin, which peaked at a Category 4 storm, made landfall in the Caribbean and headed for the US. However, Mr. Bellucci resisted getting off the boat for three days before officials were able to safely remove him and bring him back to land two days later, according to court documents. Bellucci informed the USCG officers that he had a Florida registration on board his vessel, but he was unable to locate it, court documents state. He also advised USCG officers his intended destination was London, England. According to the records, Mr. Bellucci demonstrated to authorities that he was armed with two knives measuring 12 inches and that he would try to murder himself if they tried to remove him. Officers stayed at the scene, and Mr. Bellucci allegedly threatened to blow himself up the following day, on August 27. According to the records, the USCG stated that they believed this to be a valid threat, as he possessed cables in his hand. Before he revealed the threat was a hoax on August 28, shortly after officers attempted to bring food and water, this caused officers to summon in bomb disposal experts. The documents added. USCG officers again ordered Bellucci off the vessel, but he again refused. It was then that Bellucci informed the USCG officers that the bomb was not real. Officers pulled Mr. Bellucci off the ship on August 29 and into a small boat before bringing him onshore on September 1. According to the documents, this was Mr. Bellucci's most recent encounter with the Coast Guard. Prior encounters with the agency allegedly involved a homemade vessel in 2014, 2016, and 2021. The Powerball jackpot has increased to $672 million before Wednesday night's drawing. No one claimed to have a ticket matching all six numbers after Monday night's drawing, so the Powerball prize keeps growing. The grand prize, which now stands at an estimated $672 million with a one-time cash payoff of around $320.5 million, is the 10th greatest in the history of the game. According to the game, there is a 1 in 292.2 .2 million chance of earning the ultimate prize. The successful numbers in Monday night's drawing were 2, 21, 26, 40, and 42 and the red Powerball number was 9. 3x was the power play selection. The $1 million second-tier prize for the game was won by a Massachusetts ticket that correctly identified all five white balls. The third-largest Powerball jackpot in the game's history was won in July by a fortunate player in California, who took home the $1.08 billion reward, according to the lottery. This jackpot is the greatest of 2023, The next greatest payout in the history of the game was a $754.6 million jackpot won by a player in Washington in February. In 45 states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, Powerball tickets cost $2 each play. According to the game, more than half of the money made from a ticket sale stays in the country where it was purchased. Powerball numbers drawn for $750 million jackpot. 
There is still no winner after the Powerball numbers for the estimated $750 million lottery prize were drawn on Saturday. The winning numbers on Saturday night are the red Powerball 21, the white balls 1, 12, 20, 33, and 66. Power play was two times. The $750 million award is given to winners who want to accept their winnings as a 29-year annuity. The cash option, which would be worth around $350.6 million for Saturday's drawing, is what winners normally choose. The jackpot increased to an estimated $785 million with a $367 million cash option for Monday's drawing after no ticket matched all of the winning numbers for Saturday's drawing. The lottery jackpot has grown significantly, becoming among the top 10 Powerball payouts ever. The drawing on Saturday was held after the projected $672 million Powerball jackpot with a $320.5 million cash option on Wednesday went unclaimed. Three times every week, on Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, drawings are held. Along with Washington DC, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands, Powerball is played in 45 states. Florida alligator killed after being spotted with body in his mouth. Officials in Florida shot and killed a 13-foot alligator after it was allegedly observed carrying human remains on Friday. Officers arrived at a location around 134th Avenue North and 121st Street in Ridgecrest, Florida, on Friday after hearing reports of a corpse in the water, according to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. The alligator was humanely killed with the aid of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. The area around the alligator had blood on it. According to a witness, the alligator's mouth contained a corpse. I could tell there was a body in his mouth, so I started recording, Jamarcus Bullard said. I came down to the fire department and reported it to them. Terry Williams, who was visiting the area when the incident happened, said she was shocked to see an alligator. I would have never dreamt that an alligator would be in this area, Williams said. Of course, I know there's a lake across the street, and I know about the lake in Taylor Park, but not in this neighborhood. No, I would have never thought that. The sheriff's office didn't release additional information about the incident. Police in Florida have identified the woman WHO was discovered inside an alligator. Police have identified a woman whose remains were found in the mouth of a 13-feet alligator in Florida. Sabrina Peckham, 41 was discovered in the alligator's mouth by a witness and her body was recovered from a canal near Largo, roughly 20 miles west of Tampa, according to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. The coroner's office will conduct a post-mortem study to confirm the official cause of death. However, it is likely that Ms. Peckham was killed by the alligator, as the sheriff's office stated that the animal was humanely killed. Ms. Peckham's daughter said her mother was homeless and lived near the water, and countered claims her mother had been taunting the animal. Brianna Doris wrote on Facebook, Some details I would like to share is that my mother did not taunt the alligator as some are saying in the news outlet's comments. My mother was a part of the homeless population that lived in the nearby wooded area. It is believed that she may have been walking to or from her campsite near the creek in the dark and the alligator attacked from the water.
She added, no matter how you put it, no one deserves to die like this. Ms. Peckham has put up a GoFundMe campaign to gather money for funeral expenses, and it has received close to $6,000 to date. Jamarcus Bullard witnessed the alligator and a corpse in the water on Friday in the late afternoon. I threw a rock at the gator just to see if it was really a gator, he told a TV affiliate of NBC News, Sky News US partner network. It pulled the body, like it was holding on to the lower part of the torso, and pulled it under the water. According to Mr. Bullard, he began filming on his phone and called the police. Locals are uneasy about the finding since their children routinely wander along the canal, as Jennifer Dean told TV station WFLA. Winner claims one, six billion dollars Mega Millions jackpot but still has a decision to make. A fortunate victor in the U.S. has claimed the $1.6 billion Mega Millions lottery prize. The ticket was purchased at a public store in Neptune Beach, Florida, which is close to Jacksonville. The numbers were chosen at the beginning of August, but the winner held onto the ticket for some time. Their name must be hidden for 90 days by state legislation. The greatest U.S. lottery jackpot ever was a $2.04 billion jackpot in November 2022, making this the third largest reward ever awarded. The Florida winner must now choose between receiving the whole money in 30 yearly installments or a significantly reduced lump sum. No matter what they decide, federal taxes will eat up a sizable portion. Lottery executives did not specify which course of action they had chosen, although almost everyone accepts a lump sum settlement. However, a Virginia winner who chose to remain anonymous in March 2023 opted for a $156.7 million annual payout. The last time an annuity was chosen before then was in 2014. In 45 states, Washington, D.C., and the U.S. Virgin Islands, Mega Millions is played. Box of giraffe poo seized at airport after woman wanted to use it to make a necklace. Customs agents at a U.S. airport have confiscated a package of giraffe waste after a lady attempted to enter the country with it to construct a necklace. Upon being chosen to have her belongings searched upon her arrival at the Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport in Minnesota on September 29, the woman had disclosed the little package of feces, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection. She claimed to have collected the feces while visiting Kenya and carried it back in her suitcase to construct a necklace. The Iowan woman claimed to have previously created a necklace out of moose feces. According to Minnesota Public Radio, giraffe poop can be imported into the U.S. with the correct authorizations and inspections. The woman disclosed the feces and submitted it to customs officials, according to the station, therefore she won't face punishment. The giraffe waste was eliminated by the agency's agricultural experts. LaFonda D. Sutton Burke, a field director at U.S. Customs and Border Protection, said, there is a real danger with bringing fecal matter into the U.S. If this person had entered the U.S. and had not declared these items, there is high possibility a person could have contracted a disease from this jewelry and developed serious health issues. Among the diseases customs authorities have listed as threats in Kenya are swine vesicular disease, African swine fever, classical swine fever, Newcastle disease, foot and mouth disease, and Newcastle disease.